Well, it's clearly no secret that you need cooling on your race car and especially on the K20, K24, they're prone to overheating unless you provide them with enough cooling capacity, radiator and the system is efficient. That's a good one! So with continued support from uh, Daranza in India, last year I got this cool custom-made aluminium radiator for Clio. This was a Clio fitment, so basically if you were to get one for your Clio, it would literally just slot in like it's OEM. It has all the fixings, all the same ones, and this was a non-AC version, so it didn't have all the extra, um, other extra bits. So this year, the reason why I even need one, sorry, jumping ahead, there's a hole. So when, when the block exploded, it basically grenaded parts into it. Theoretically, yes, it can be fixed, but I don't want to risk it. So I reached out to Dorenza and I was like, guys, I need a new one, help the brother out. So they sent me this unit. Because we are running a different engine, there is no need to have a clear radiator. So, this is the universal radiator. It's dimensionally slightly smaller than the other one. It's a little bit narrower and it's a little bit shorter. But this thing is 51 millimeters thick, the core. Even though they state it's 50 mil, I've just measured, maybe my measurement is off. Uh, they say it's 50, but I measured that it's 51, which is just a bonus. The old one was 40 mil. So, this one is. 20% 20, 20 larger capacity. But the coolest thing about this radiator, and I've never seen anything like this before on the market, maybe I just wasn't looking. This has integrated oil cooler. Yes, you heard me right. Those two ports, uh, they're not A and 16, I think they're JIC, um, JIC 16 or not 16. Anyways, they're oil cooler ports, so you have a condenser coil running in here see in this video so i put my little camera in and it just basically goes all the way down in here so oil circulates on the inside by itself it's not going to be very efficient because obviously there is no air running through it but what's the biggest sort of capacity of fluids in your car that is constantly getting cooled with your fan with your radiator yes coolant so this is a heat exchanger for your oil inside a radiator. So for um, two massive benefits. One means your oil or your coolant or vice versa, they will warm up quicker because they're not independent and you are not running uh, your, because you know how even you can have a thermostatic uh, sandwich plate, but still. And your coolant will be cooling your oil. And the reason why I know it's a good idea is because a lot of OEM cars use this. My RS4 has that. Um, it has a heat exchanger that uh, it cools oil through it. It has a radiator, but it sort of bypassed the normal driving. And as far as I know, um, Honda has its own version as well. It has this sort of heat exchanger on, on the back. Usually they're quite small. They don't need to be this big because the, the fluid uh, heat transfer between fluids is actually quite, quite efficient. But this, this, this core, this tube runs all the way from here, all the way down, and it's fairly thick. I think it's about, I can't measure obviously on the inside, it's about 25 mil with a, a nice thick wall and it has um, like honeycomb filled sort of center. So it should be really efficient. Right, being a universal cooler, I am not going to be trying to run any of these bobby nonsense things. The adapter plate that I got from T7 has an A and 16 inlets and outlets. So yeah, I will be converting this radiator for A and 16 fittings. And very conveniently, look at this. Oh, let's not drop it. Look at this. It's perfect because those are 35 millimeter outlets, outlet, inlet, inlet, outlet, whichever way you want to circulate your coolant. So those things will weld onto them. I might make them a little bit shorter because there is no need for it to sort of stick out this much. Um, so we'll weld two of those. Oil cooler goes into here. All I will need is probably weld a couple of brackets like this 
on the side just so I can uh, make another bracket like that so it mounts on the side and the bottom it's similar to the Clio it basically has two pins and I am planning to reuse the same sort of rubber bobbins because uh, contrary to popular belief radiators always need to be dampened a lot of people I've seen it before they mount their oil cooler uh, just sort of hard mount it and then they wonder why it's leaking why it's failing that's because of uh, vibrations uh, fluid on the inside makes it heavy and it vibrates and they're very del delicate the cores you know how I was always saying that the only original part on my Clio unmodified are those things I just found another one this thing has always been on the car unmodified it's a rubber dampener and it says Renault I mean admittedly I did modify the second one and they are a pair so maybe it's not really it's not really um, doesn't really qualify as unmodified but yeah this one was completely stock and unmodified so we're going to be running this again and whoever says this is not a Renault anymore yes it is look it has unmodified parts and by the way guys look you see this this is not my race suit I had so many messages who were like oh new race suit wanker fancy race suit oh I like the race suit this is my overalls I work in those because they're fireproof but they're not FIA uh, approved I kind of uh, smuggled them from Tegiva's headquarters uh, because just so nice to work in a onesie like that and plus you know you can see all the all the logos you know sponsor logos so yeah this is not my race suit and I'm not just being a wanker just sitting there in a race suit this is actually the overalls I work I have a, quite a few different ones but this one just 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 works so all right let's do another t-shirt giveaway guys if you want one of those t-shirts it's very very simple all you have to do is follow myself and Darren's performance on Instagram all links in the description and also leave a comment under this video anything will do and in a couple of weeks time I'll do a live draw and a winner will get a t-shirt another thing I'm going to be doing in order to save some weight and to make plumbing easier and the whole system is easy you know how some radiators especially the older the older stuff they have a simple fill sort of uh, neck at the top I uh, ask myself why do you even need this expansion bottle extra hose and all of that stuff so I bought one of these well this one is too small by Mishimoto so I bought a bigger one because it's I'm on Amazon the only place um, so I'm gonna weld it onto the top onto here or onto here I might actually raise it a little bit I might have some pipe and I'm gonna use my old uh, stand uh, cap this one is 21 25 pounds so I think this one is 21 psi or 24 psi uh, so we well, that I actually been reading. I actually was talking uh, to Gisfab Eden the other day, asking what what pressure cap uh, would you use, and he was like, I don't know, whatever the stock one is. So I've been googling it, and apparently, the higher the rating of the pressure cap means you are raising the boiling point of your coolant. On race cars where you use purely water or really high content water mix, you want to raise this because obviously water boils at 100 degrees and the more pressure you kind of create in your system the higher the boiling point so me running mostly water with a coolant additive like wetter water wetter or some other one uh, purple royal purple i've tried quite a few different ones um i think it's a good idea to sort of raise it that's why i kind of never really boiled even though you remember in one of my previous videos where i had to um recalibrate all my sensors and it turned out that my coolant might have been up to 115 never boiled the reason being because I have a really high pressure cap obviously never blew always work best so yeah now you know now you know um yeah extremely happy how this thing looks would you like to see how it's gonna fit so it's gonna fit something like this I'm still not 100% sure on the position but at the end of the day you know a radiator is a radiator so it has to be at the front I know I know some people would say oh Rusky why don't you angle it like this why don't you do this and that and then have the vent the reason being there is absolutely no room for a vent here because of the manifold because the bonnet sort of stops here you either end up with a little slot like this I've looked I've looked at those options 
also the intercooler because it literally sits against my bumper cutout. It means I would need to heavily modify the bumper. It means there is not enough space. And obviously on the previous engine I had a dry sump, so I couldn't really put the radiator further because the dry sump pump was running here. On this one, theoretically, I could, but then you, you, you run into so many issues and you really want to have a decent angle. You can't just have, let's say, you know, you can't just have five degree angle because it's kind of pointless. You want it to be almost at 45, 35 degree angle. So the air goes through it like that at the bottom and the top. Then you can make a little nice duct at the bottom, have really good sort of exhaust at the top, and then it will sort of evacuate everything. On this one, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna bother, just too much effort and the cooling system did work in the past, so it's all fine. Maybe in the future when I decide to put the radiator in the back, we can do something like this. Mount it completely flat, have a massive head, um, knuckle duct in the roof and then just two channels all carbon of course running through the radiator with exhaust at the bottom so we'll have a blown diffuser through water cooler um yeah let's do a bit of aluminium welding shall we that's the bracket done for the side you know what i think it's half decent now let's weld this onto this we don't want it this far out <clears throat> I think it just looks a bit untidy so something something like this is decent so we cut it somewhere here before you say what about the swarf you're gonna have to clean it So we don't have to clean it so it's all good now we carefully deburr it do you know what i'm thinking you see the hole in here versus the hole in here so at the front the hole is much bigger than at the rear. I reckon, I reckon I can turn it on a lathe, make it a little bit bigger. Um, like I showed before, same distance cut off don't need that put the mask on set amperage to 85 amps 140 frequency and uh, 40 balance so as you can see it's a nice little stubby AN16 port. Brilliant, happy with that. Right, let's put it in the car and let's see how everything fits. The joys of Amazon. All race car could be built on Amazon. I mentioned this one is a little bit too small. Next day delivery, boom, a big one. And this one will fit my original car. So now we need to weld it onto the side. So I picked this side because it's a little bit wider. We're gonna put this thing on it just so it can be raised a little bit higher and then this is gonna be welded onto that. Look at that. And that thing obviously goes on top like that and we feel it from the radiator, eliminating any need for expansion bottle, extra plumbing, extra weight of the thing. So it should be nice and easy. Let's weld this. Clean it with acetone, clean both parts with acetone, position it like we want, ready, go, steady, go. Good idea to clean your filler rod because look, you see, all this is dirt and aluminium doesn't like it. Aluminium starts 
oxidizing and doing all weird sorts of things. Probably not the prettiest of welds, um, but I never claimed to be an amazing welder, but I know it will hold and most likely it's not gonna leak because none of my previous things really leaked. Um, I tend to sort of do it quite hot and lots of weld and stuff. But some of them, like this one, look, it even has a perfect good color in there. Um, you know what, I mean, it is what it is. Um, radiator is done, let's put it inside there and have a look how it looks. Ta-da! So yeah, thanks to Dareza, I have a brand new radiator. Universal radiator that required a little bit of work. Obviously, it's a universal one. Um, but I'm really happy how it fits. Perfect. I'm reusing original Renault uh, rubber bushing at the bottom. At the top, we have a little bracket and a little uh, rubber spacer. Uh, fill in on the right. Then we have A and 16 entry and exit. Also, like I mentioned before, we have oil cooler on this integrated and this thing, you remember when I fitted it, made it, fits pretty much bolt on. Uh, all I need to do is just drill some holes and attach them to the bottom, to this tube and maybe, maybe weld another sort of flat piece to the radiator like I did on the previous one. But overall, job well done. So yeah, clearly you don't need to use off the shelf radiator for your car. Um, it can be a universal one if you have a welder, if you have aluminium, and if you know where to buy all the parts that you need. Um, yeah, very happy. Darenza, thank you very much. Hopefully this should eliminate all the possible heating issues uh, for this season. And let's move on to another job. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and all that stuff.